Hello and welcome to the first stream we've done for a long time. I got a bit bored of them in the summer, not going to lie. And um, yeah, let's see how this goes. So we've got, um, I did a puzzle rush the other day. That was, uh, I did 54. And we'll see whether I can get anywhere near that again this time because that was um, a hell of a run I got to sort of solving some 20, 20 uh, 2900 strength puzzles which was pretty cool but let's see how we do this time so I've got my old trusty uh, friends Mogwai there in the background and we'll uh, we'll see whether we can uh, use them to uh, whoops Use them to inspire us to do some good stuff. In uh, okay, right. Let's go with some bits and pieces here. Then okay, so uh, we'll do the easy ones first, and we'll just go through them as we um, as we move. So we've got this king has no escape squares, so any check. Any good safe check will do, and that would be number one. Uh, what we got? We can take the rook. Looks quite good, doesn't it? I don't think there's anything else. I mean, this is the thing. Like, there's no assumptions to be made in these um, in these puzzles. That's the worst thing you can do is make some assumptions. What have we got? Um, that pawn is just going to run, is it? Looks like it will. And it will easily get there in time. Right, uh, this is a mate in two. This h6 um, stops the pawn. Or it, it leaves this square very, very loose. So let's take advantage of that. And then we can get a mate there. Um, no escape squares for the king apart from b3. So all you need to do to get a checkmate here is to look at the king and at uh, b3 at the same time. And we can do that with rook to d3 uh, this is the back rank so the king again just need to be able to look at these three squares at the same time to get a mate and we can do that by sacrificing our queen like so let me just check my audio is going okay seems like it would be okay um Okay, well, yeah, this, this is a Zvishenzuk puzzle where we've got the queen, both queens attacked, but if we can, it's a, a desperado Zvishenzuk, so if we can get as much as we can for our queen, then we can then just take their queen um, whenever we've got the option, and we can take this guy, so we've gained two rooks in order for, uh, for the queen, and then we can just get down first. Uh, we've got this mate threat to worry about, so we've got to play forcing moves. Fortunately, we have a mate in one. Uh, what's going on here? Uh, it's a it's classic example of a knight. So a knight, whenever a knight is um, is next to a king, it doesn't, it can't possibly look at any squares next to it. So these are not being helped by the knight. In fact, it's just in the way. Same with the rook, can't look this way. So we've just got a mate in one there. Uh, we've got a nice knight fork like so. Is that the best we have? I suppose it must be. Yes. Okay. Uh, and then presumably just king the corner. Uh, okay. Again, checkmate uh, pattern here. We've got. We just need to look at these three squares. Our rook is doing the trapping. We need an attacking piece. We've got one here. And we can get a nice little checkmate like that. Uh, I'm assuming this is queen h5 because this is quite a common trap where um, pawn takes pawn unmasks a possible route here for the queen to come. And so, uh, yeah, we can just do this and then we win the rook in the corner. Uh, well, this pawn wants to promote. The rook needs to move out of the way with tempo, and we can do that. A tempo move would be a check here. 
So we can do this and then go up and uh, it's wanting something else. I guess we just hoover off the knight. Yep. Uh, again, the king has no escape squares. So we've got a trapping piece and we've got a diagonal facing piece on the board here with the queen. So we can just come in like so and just munch everything in our path along that diagonal. Loose pieces drop off LPDO. We can get rid of it with a nice fork like so. It's going to block with knight c3. And then we've got a nice Zvishen Zook here again. Where this knight is defending the bishop. If you want to take that bishop we need to remove the defender. And we can do that like so. And then taking the bishop is going to be best isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Where are we up to? 15. So we're into the sort of medium strength puzzles now and we've got a mate in one so the other day i did a 54 which was getting into 2900 so i'm hoping we can get somewhere into the mid 40s today that would be nice i would enjoy i would enjoy that uh what have we got we've got a rook looking at a loose queen and if we again can get pieces out of the way this bishop feels like it can just go to now we've got to be careful here because this rook can come down to c1 like so but then i think we can just happily block so let's try that and then rook down yes okay um pieces on the same line very vulnerable to fins uh, pins and forks and skewers and here i think we can quite happily do a pin the rook will take us then we just yeah this must be correct i don't see anything else on the board uh, unless no must be yeah and then what king e7 give the rook no checks and then we can again pinned pieces you want to put pressure on those pinned pieces and the way to do that is by playing king f7 and then we can win the bishop and we're quite happy. Um, right, this is quite a cool one. So, again, loose pieces aren't necessarily, don't have necessarily have zero defenders. They can just have one. And if you can remove that one defender, then you're in business. And we've got a nice little Zvishen Zug with a check here. So if we just took the queen, then um, black would just recapture us. And then that would be it. So let's throw in this little check first. And then we could have taken the queen afterwards. Pawn forwards, let's go with this square. So I'm assuming we just play the knight fork on d3. Don't see anything else. Yep, have that. And then what do we do here? Um, assuming we just play king f8. Even at this sort of low level, there's uh, often ways to the, the be inexact. It must be. Must be speaking FA, yeah. Okay, uh, what have we got? We've got a pawn very near promotion. And we want to kick that, get rid of that bishop. So I'm assuming we just play king g8. Don't see anything else. No, and then we can hoover that off. And then get out of the way. We don't want to allow king f7 because that would completely block our king forever. It's on a light square. Our bishop would not be able to help. So it must be. King g8 and then what king g7 yes okay what do we have what do we have if it's obvious i haven't seen it i'm assuming it's and we can take the rook encourage this knight up here and then what do we have? Queen d2 check. Ah, and then we have a fork somewhere. We'll just quickly we play queen e1 after that to either skewer the knight or fork it. Yeah. And then, yeah, queen e1 is a nice little skewer where afterwards we can bring our bishop back to e6 to ensure that that happens lovely uh lots of things going on here we've got pieces everywhere on the h file and we have a pawn looking at g7 does black have any checks 
Yes, they do. What am I missing? <laughs> they also have E4, which might be quite nasty. This doesn't feel enormously clear cut, but I'm assuming we can just happily take this pawn. And then what, F4? To block the uh, this very nasty check? Must be. And then again, I'm assuming we can just take this? Yeah. Um, right, what we got? Well, we can take a, we can do another little desperado thing here. We're losing this queen probably. We can take theirs. So if we take this guy, they take back. We just gain a rook. But we are already a rook down. No, we're not really exchanged down. So that would be fine. Any other checks? We could play queen h5 check, but I think then just g6 solves that issue. Must be this. And let me take this. Yeah. Um, okay, good. Uh, what's it wants us to do? Ah, okay, this is quite a nice one. So we can take this rook. It looks like we can't because of rook d1. But I think we can then just bring this rook back down to a1. And we've got everything covered. Yeah, we do. There we go. And that will, oops, that will be all she said um rook what have we got here if we go rook c7 king h8 and then i'm assuming we've just got time to play queen e7 and there's nothing to be done there's nothing else this is the thing with survival. We've got time. We can discuss it. So there's no uh, there's no hurry, like with other iterations of puzzle rush. I mean, this isn't really a rush. It's puzzle puzzle discussion. I like it. This must be correct. Yeah, because if they go if um, rook c7, king h6, then we've got queen h3, king g5, queen g4, king h6, queen h4 is their mate. And then king queen e7 just looks like it wins everything. Yes, it does. Just win the lot. Okay, good. Uh, what do we have? Okay, we can take this and then take on c4 so there would be a piece up i don't see anything else forcing again we have lpdo here loose pieces drop off if we can find a way to get to it which we can then i think that should be enough yeah i don't see anything else good all right so we're halfway to uh, what i achieved the other day which was 54 but the puzzles get exponentially harder. What we have over here, we have the little rating, sort of 14, 62 rated puzzles. And here we have, what are we doing? Again, I haven't seen anything obvious. I'm sure, I'm sure there is. Ah, okay, we've got a nice little trick here. So um, we can play Rook H1 and when they capture uh, the king and the queen are on the same colour, pieces on the same colour, as well as on the same line, are very vulnerable to forks. And so we can then do a nice little knight. Um, nice little knight fork. Like so. Lovely. Uh, any checks? Yes, plenty. So we might need to be forcing here. Unless we've just got queen takes f7 with and then we can hide the king somewhere over here. I'm assuming that's what we're doing here. Don't see anything else. Yeah, because the queen is just just on the wrong complex, isn't it? It needs to be able to come to c1 or d1, but it can't. Yeah, this must be a bit. And then we can hide g1 knight in king here and then we take with the h pawn to give ourselves an escape square give ourselves some luft and then he's just giving away all his pieces lovely right uh what we got 
This is the only defensive piece around the king. So if we hoover it off, maybe there's some groovy checkmates. Yeah, we can come into d6, I think, afterwards, and then just take away all of these possible escape squares. And then bring our rook up to tidy up. Good. Okay, up to 30. Right. Uh, what we got now? Okay, so we can't take the bishop because queen takes d1 is mate. So let's forget that. Is there a little intermezzo we can play so that we can take the bishop safely at some point? Something like bishop takes c6. I think that feels correct. But let's double check. I promise you, the um, once we get past 40, I'm going to be taking a while. And we might have to have a little bit of a discussion. But for now... So the bishop takes c6. Queen has to recapture because it's, um, it's being attacked. Which deflects the queen away from the d1 square. I think that makes it safe. The complication is that the rook would be able to take the knight, but then we can take that rook with check. I don't see anything else. Anything else forcing at the very least. Let's do it. And then I seem to double check. I'm not walking into anything nasty. I don't think I am. Takes. Yep. Good. Well, black threats. Knight, knight, both of those look fairly nasty. So, so we need to be forcing here, we need to find uh, checks, big attacks, things that just mean that black doesn't have any opportunity to uh, enact their dastardly plans here. And we've got a very nice little mate in three where we can sacrifice our rook, which gives us room for our queen to come in with check and then queen, knight, helper, mate uh, follows. Bishop and Queen on the same, uh, are two squares apart. That means they're very vulnerable to forks, especially from pawns and knights. Here we've got a pawn that can come forwards. What is the problem with that? Is there a problem with that? I don't see much else in the position. Must be. Must be. And then what are we, yeah, this is the bit where, where we're taking with, I'm assuming we're taking with the Queen. Uh, because otherwise the knight itself might become pinned to the queen uh, once that bishop on d6 moves out of the way. I'm assuming that's the case. Yeah, I think we take with the queen. Good, right. Uh, what do we have? We have a king and two pawns against a rook. All right, this is interesting. Very interesting. Well, we've got to move a king because the pawns at the moment are interdependent on each other. If one moves, then if this one moves, then it just gets taken. This one moves, the other one just gets taken. So we've got to move a king. It's whether we move it to f3 or g3. I'm going to assume it's f3 because if you go to g3, you might, um, you might let the other king in that way which doesn't feel like the best thing you want to do. King g2. Feels like there's probably something there for Nasi that white can do. Ah, yeah. So I, actually, I think the main problem is that after King g3, Rook g3 would do a skewer of the king and the pawn which means that you'd have to move the king to f3 and then actually maybe you haven't gained anything there but my instinct here is to to shoulder out this king to stop it coming any closer to our pawns i think that's probably what makes sense the most yeah let's do it oh my goodness it was wrong right what was the problem there what could i what could i have done better what was? I have to look, go back and look at that one. I'm not entirely sure what why Queen King G3 was any better. Anyway, never mind. 
two one strike down. Right, we could have got a free rook, but they got free rook too. Um, what can we do to get out of that problem? Still very confused why King G3 was better there. Maybe it's because you can play H2 sooner. That's the position. Just about to see it there. Not sure. It's probably something I've got to learn rather than do. Right. Um, well, what's the idea here? Have we got time to play h3? Surely not, they can play f3. Surely there's no time to do that. Hmm, I'm not sure. Take the rook, they take ours. It's king g7, and then we're attacking the knight. Hmm, I'm not sure. Okay. If we move the rook out of the way, and then sort of threaten to come down here. I don't see a whole lot there either. This is this is a strange puzzle. Unless I'm just I'm probably just missing something very obvious. Up around this level, sort of eighteen hundred, they should be fairly intuitive. It's when you get past like twenty three, twenty four hundred that they become pigs. This is actually quite good for me doing it on a stream because I really have to focus. Like the other day when I was, um, I was basically taking little, little five minute breaks in between, five minute gaps in between to do stuff. I suppose this isn't the worst opportunity while I have a little kind of dwell up to tell you that the uh, episode 57 of the chess pit came out on Thursday and we do little, little commentaries on things in the chess world and um, yeah, we've been going for over a year now, and it's it's been quite a, a good addition to my life, having my co-commentators, John and Chris, on there, discussing things all in the chess world. What do we do here? Um, Rook B8. Yeah, but then if I just move this, the Queen just comes back, and then what? With the exchange down here, we need to be forcing. What am I missing? Okay, so if h3, queen takes rook, king g7. I just, <coughs> excuse me, I suppose. If f4, then. <coughs> excuse me, I'm really not sure what to do here. Can't see a whole lot other than H3. Should we go for it? <laughs> Don't really want to tap out of this before 40. I mean, we've only been going for what, 25 minutes? Let's do it. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's not going to make me um, make me prove it. All right. I mean, that was one where was, my instincts were correct, as opposed to the last one. I got a bit spooked there. Right, queen doesn't have many escape squares here. That might be something to do with it. Queen only has uh, two. This is what happens when you lead with the queen. The queen becomes very vulnerable if it's your furthest forward piece in the middle game. 
or certainly in the opening, it's going to become very, very vulnerable here. The queen only has two potential moves. So if we can take away those, we are laughing. And I think we can with a5, queen c4, uh, knight e5. That opens up uh, the d4 square, but then we've got nice little uh, discovered attack on the queen after knight f3 check. I think that's probably the solution. And then, yeah, knight e5 takes away d3. We need to take away d3 from the queen, otherwise it's going to escape that way. And I'm assuming it's just knight f3 check here. There's nothing more, there's nothing better, is there? Yeah. Okay. So after a little setback, we've got two in a row. Uh, big attack here. We can take on c6 and then just castle, can't we? Must be. Must be. And then castles? Or b1? We got better? We got any mate? Rook b1, yeah, rook b1 must be better because it's a forcing move and then we can have time to take the rook, right? Okay, good. So we're getting towards that 40 mark where things start do start to become a bit hairy and then I might be, uh, might be forced to spend 10, 15 minutes on each one really going through the variations. Okay, what we can do here, we've got a loose knight, but we also have our loose knight, so maybe we've got a Zwitschenzug on f2. And then we take it. Um, must be. Must be. I'm assuming it's then going to play queen h5. And then I think we've just got knight takes e4, followed by knight takes g5. I'm hoping this is just a little thing with the queen. With the knight here. Oh, we're doing that way. Okay, fine. In that case, I think we just take the knight. And then... Or do we? No, this is the point. I think we take this guy first. Because if, um, if you take the knight, then d4 is a double attack. And it's nasty. So I think we need to take on f2 first. And then we take this guy. Yep, good. That's why it's quite a, high, a higher rated puzzle than it should really be. That's not actually that hard, but I think people are just assuming there that um, queen takes g5 is, um, is correct. And here we've just got a big soft spot here on h7, which we can use. I think we just add a piece. I think we just add a piece. And there's nothing they can do. Because they've got to go rookie e8. And then, yeah, bishop h7, bishop g6. Yeah, okay, this this must be correct. And then we play bishop there first. Otherwise, the king is going to have time to run away. So the, we're forcing the king into the corner here. Give it as few options as possible. Into the corner as much as we can. And, yeah, good. Okay. Two rooks and two knights. And these guys look very sad, don't they? Um, but our rook's being attacked. And our knight's being attacked twice. So if we lead with is there some kind of groovy mate or not? No. So knight takes f2, pawn takes g6, knight d3 check, king d1. Let's make those different colour. So what's there? What exists? Ah, then we've got a nice little fork of the king and the rook I don't think I've missed anything in that line 
Ah, we don't have the fork because of the knight. Whoops, one second. So rook f1, king c2. Okay. One second, that was silly. What have we got here? Ah, we've got rook f1, and then king c2, rook takes c1, check. King takes d3, knight c5, check. King somewhere, and then rook takes knight. I think that makes the most sense. And then here, yes. Good, right. Uh, there's going to be some thing along here you think that looks quite uh there's gonna be some forcing way of doing things right knight a5 threatens knight b3 mate or do we play knight no hold on let's think about this Oh, is it just as simple as rook takes b4, pawn takes b4, and then rook a6 check? Rook a6 with... No, it's not. It can't be. Yes, it is, because then a3... a3 queen takes, pawn takes... Rook takes is mate. Yeah, this looks good. Alright, let's try it. And then here. And then we've got this nice little mate where the knight is doing... The Lord's work and the Rook is just completely in the way. Right, up to 40. Okay, good. Uh, we've got a fairly simple fork here. And then what happens? So Rook G4, Queen has to go to E3 to defend it. Do we have anything clever there? Not sure. Some kind of knight d5 into f4. Surely we've got to play rook g4, because otherwise this knight moving anywhere just um, whoops, just reveals a check. Surely. I don't think anything else makes sense. Queen e3, then what? Knight d5? So, this is what I was after. So, Queen e3. Oops, let's try that again. Queen e3. Knight d5. So, the Queen would have to stay on that diagonal, you think, to keep an eye on the Knight. Is there anything else that makes sense? It just doesn't. I just have, haven't missed. I've missed the um, the haymaker there. Oh, is it? No. Oh, that's what it is. Okay, when the knight goes to f4, then the queen will be cut off from the defence of the knight, and we can just take it. That. That must be correct. Yeah. And then knight d5, queen c1, knight f4 uh, disconnects the queen from the knight on f5. So. And then here. Oh no! Oh, I could have should have taken the queen first. I just. Ah. You take the queen first, then you play the rook. I just rushed that entirely. Uh, never mind. Okay. This one. I'm getting tired. It's a Sunday evening. What can we do? So we've got knight. Ah, uh, this is quite nice, I think. We've got knight f2, bishop takes rook, and then rook takes. That must be. Yeah. And then we can take that guy. We can take this guy, and then queen e1. 
Uh, I'm annoyed about that. It's just, you just hoover off the queens first before you take the knight. That was very, very silly. I'd seen that as well. Okay, we've got pin. I've got some kind of check. We've got this. There's lots of things going on here. It's the first time all day I hadn't rushed. I'd rushed. Never mind. This wasn't going to be the longest stream ever anyway. Is this is just as prosaic as playing queen takes b7 and then knight g5? Or is there something better with bishop takes here first? But then that covers uh, a lot of the squares we want to use. I don't have premium chess.com, so I only get one of these a day, which focuses me quite well. All right, so queen takes, and if knight blocks, then we just take the the rook. If they block with the other knight, then I think we just have a... Do we not? Okay, we don't. All right, let's go through the, uh, let's go through the ones we got wrong. So what do we have here? Um, so this was one we got wrong earlier. And I tried king f... I didn't. I tried king... Yes, I did. There we go. I tried king f3 here. Which was wrong. So I'm assuming it's just... No, it's not. What's going on? What have I missed? Oh, uh, I've been an idiot. Oh, uh, we can take... We can give that away. Mm. Never mind. Okay, so that's that. Uh, this one... Yeah, so this one, yeah, I got it all right, and then I just rushed the uh, final bit. Rook g4, and then knight d5. Take this. <laughs> we don't do that. That's just my mouse being silly. Let's try that again. Takes. And then, yeah, that's that. And then the final one, just now. Okay, so queen takes b7 is wrong. Oh, do we play knight g5 first and then... Well, actually, we've got a choice here, don't we? Takes... Oh, no. Okay, let's start again. Oh, uh, can we get out of the way and do it that way? What am I missing here? What am I missing? Oh, we can go to c7 and get the other brick. Right, that's cute. That's cute. Okay, well, 42, not, um, 41 even, not brilliant, not great, um, actually not good at all, but hopefully there is a bit in there for plenty of you to, I mean, if there's some base, we went through the basic ones properly there, so this, um, and I'll try and do one of these, these streams to help myself as much as you guys, um, little, nice little kind of commentary on my learning as we go through the weeks and I think this was this will start a nice little um, nice little series of these puzzle rush revivals. Um, anyway, my name's Phil Makepeace, part of the Chess Pit podcast and yeah we've we release episodes every Thursday. We're up to number 57 now. You can find us on Apple, Google Podcasts, iVox, uh, Amazon Music, any podcast platform of your choosing. So I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you guys again next time.